For you it's unemployment, that's a care. Mm -hmm. For somebody else it's poor health. For somebody else it's a marriage conflict that you're trying to reconcile. For somebody else it is a wayward son or grandchild or granddaughter, grandson. For somebody else it may be poverty. For somebody else it may be you can't get ahead. You got a downfall in your life. And, and for somebody else, it may be the death of a loved one that's been dear to you and you can't get over. Whatever is your care, he cares for your care. Amen. That's why Mary went to him. Isn't that good stuff? Amen. He cared. And then I close with this. Talking about what you do when you're running on empty. Number one, you don't, don't go to the preacher first. <laughs> you don't come down here to Brother Jim, the, and I entertain you to come. I'm going to pray for you. But I tell you what, don't come to me before you go to the Lord. Amen. 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 Go to him first. Amen. On your knees first. Amen. He's the one that knows your care. Amen. I don't know your care until you share your care. And then I'm helpless and hopeless. I'll pray for you. I'll emphasize, uh, if, if, can you say, emphasize. sympathize, empathize with you. I'll, man, that's some big words. <laughs> what is that word you said in David Lunch? They couldn't come last night in their church band, so they had to split up because they let the Sticker expired. Now we're talking about redneck stuff. <laughs> so we were eating lunch today and you come up with a word I never heard. You said the reason why y'all couldn't come is because your license plate was what? Expired. No, oh, you said you get a long name. F the word. <laughs> oh, that long that word. Had, oh, that was on my farm show. Oh, what was it? What was it? Fictitious. Fictitious. <laughs> he had a fictitious plate. Whatever. <laughs> well, if the, Sympathize and empathize. I can empathize with if I walk in those shoes. Somebody that's lost a spouse, I can't even sympathize with you. Because I've been blessed and I, for 37 years, I still have my spouse. Amen. I don't know what it's like. If you buried a child, I can sympathize with you. But I hadn't walked in that valley. And don't you say you know what it means if you have it. Amen. 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 Don't be that foolish. There's some hurting people. Right. God forbid you buried a grandchild. Mm -hmm. This mama here lost her child. We've been blessed. Rita and I never had a miscarriage. Our both kids never had a miscarriage. And, and we don't know what it's like, but we sympathize with you, baby, and we pray for you. And thank God God gave you another chance and he gave you another child after that look at her back there two of them and he saved you Sunday it don't get any better than that but some valleys that you and I haven't walked and other people walk we don't understand mm -hmm. don't even try to fool yourself and say you do right that's right but every problem that any of you have ever counted including myself Jesus knows all about it. Amen. Amen. He cares. Right. Now, so you turn to Jesus when you have a problem. You talk to Jesus about your problem. And number three and finally, here's what you do when you're running on empty. You trust Jesus. Amen. Amen. To handle your problem. That's right. That's right. Trust him. Isn't that Amen. Good, Brother Richard? Praise God. Y'all been trusting, have you? Amen. Y'all been on your knees praying? You pray every service. You and your wife and your family, you've got a monumental decision you have to make. You've got the plate full. You've got some things that are uncertain in your life that you're going to be facing. You take it to Jesus. You talk to him about it. And here's the difference. Just trust him with your problem. Amen. Now, that's good because notice the greatest advice that's ever been given. Socrates, Plato, all them boys, they had brilliant minds and they offered advice and good advice. But no advice has ever been given greater than the advice that Jesus' mother Mary gave to those servants when she said, 
whatsoever he says, do it. That's right. Man. That's right. Amen. That's right. You know, there was a poll not long ago, a Gallup poll. They polled uh, those in the church and those out of the church. And they come up with this after polling about 6,000. 3,000 that claimed to go to church on a regular basis. 3,000 that never went to church. And it was decided through this poll that you could tell very little difference between the average churchgoer and the person who never went to church. Mm -hmm. Tell very little difference. Right. The average churchgoer with their lifestyle. Because the average churchgoer in this poll, a lot of them bought lottery tickets, a lot of them was online, scratch off with those who never went to church, a lot of them were down at the boats, a lot of them were down at the beer joints, a lot of them were down at the bars, a lot of them committed adultery over their spouse. You just couldn't keep, tell no difference. And you know the reason why you can't tell any difference between the average church folks and the folks that never go to church? It's because the average church folk never does what Jesus tells them to do. Amen. Amen. That's, right. That's, the That's right. Yep. That's the difference. Man. Notice what Jesus told them to do. Look at verse number six, and we'll close. And there were set six water pots of stone after the manner of purifying of the Jews. Containing two or three firkins apiece. Now, here's six water pots. They're between 20 and 30 gallons, each one of them. Mm -hmm. 20 and 30 gallons. These water pots were ceremonial for the purification. And let me break that down for you. The sole reason for these six water pots at that wedding ceremony or at that reception party was for the people to wash their dirty hands. Mm -hmm. Their dirty feet and their dirty faces mm -hmm. from each of those pots. Now, let's just understand that no doubt they probably would periodically pour out the dirty water and fill the pot again, but they never purified the pot. So those pots became stale, stagnated, filthy. Amen? Yeah. Amen. And so here's what Jesus told the servants. He said, fill each one of those pots with water. And fill it full. That's important. Mm -hmm. The reason why it's important is because if they only filled the pot half full, they would not have been obedient. Mm -hmm. They would not have done what Jesus said Amen. to do. Amen. And so when they filled the pots full, then Jesus said, now, take a cup of that water and present it to the governor of the feast, that wine connoisseur. I mean, that one that knew wine like nobody else knew wine. Take him a cup. And they took him a cup. You see, they're obeying what Jesus said to them each time. And when that wine connoisseur took that cup and sipped it, what did he say? He oh, said, yeah. my goodness. That's the best there is. Y'all say the best wine to last. Hear yeah, me. He said, this ain't right. He says, usually you serve the best wine up first until they get tanked. <laughs> and then you can serve them soda pop. They won't know the difference. <laughs> Amen. <Yeah. laughs> Y'all laughing off the heart. You know exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, We've right. been there in our past lives. Yeah, Amen. Yeah. Right. yeah. yeah. Get that buzz going, you don't know what you drink. It's all good. Huh? You want to confess anything? Is that drunken preacher? That's an alcoholic drunken preacher. Right. That's what he's like. Same with grace. Amen. 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 Now, here's the message behind that. So many people, and it may very well be you tonight. I'm not a judge. I quit playing God a long time ago. But generically speaking, it could be you. So many people I've discovered in preaching all across the country every week. Many folks, they want the blessing first and then the obedience. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Don't work that way. Right. For instance, they want the blessing. Lord, 
if you'll just send me a paycheck that I'm not expecting, where I can pay my mortgage next week that's due, I'll start serving you like I've never served you before. Lord, if you'll just bring my child back, we'll get back in church and we'll start praising you for what you've done. Lord, if you'll just touch my body and heal me, I'll promise you, I'll give my life to you and I'll start going to church every week. That's not the formula. That's right. Amen. Amen. That's right. We've tried it, haven't we? Mm -hmm. We want the blessing and then obedience. But God says you've got to have the obedience. And then comes the blessing. Praise God. Amen. You've got to do what he says to do. Right. And then he'll bless you for it. Hallelujah. Amen. You want your marriage mended. You start doing what he tells you to do right. and trust him with your problem and he'll eventually take care of your problem. God, He's not going to do anything for you until you do what he expects you to do for him. Amen. 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 We got it backwards. <laughs> we want him to do for us. He says, I'm not going to do for you until you do what I expect you to do for me. Amen. Man. So that's good stuff. Praise God. And we thank the Lord for it. Amen. I've often asked myself, when did that water turn into wine? And I can come up with this conclusion for what it's worth. You can prove me wrong, it'll be all right. I really don't think it turned into wine until that master ceremonist touched his lip with that cup. Because Jesus had to see if those servants were going to obey him. Every crossing T and every dotted I, what he said for them to do. And when they did, they didn't know it was wine. They just obeyed him. And when they did, Jesus gave the best. Now, Jesus will not do what you need him to do for you until you do what he wants you to do for him. I said that. I'm going to close with this. Six pots. Let's break it between, sit between 20 and 30. Let's just figure 25 gallon each of the six pots. Okay. Every one of them, 25 gallons of wine. That's 2,500 cups per pot of wine. That would have been enough wine to fill Jerusalem up. Amen? Man. That was more, more wine than what they needed to finish out that feast. That's right. Do you know what the miracle is behind that? If you give to Jesus your problem and trust him, he always gives much more than that. Amen. Amen. That's right. Amen. That's right. Amen. That's right. Praise God. Amen. Give him praise tonight. Amen. 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 Let's, bow Let's bow our heads and close our eyes.